Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. What a great honor it is to me to be able to open the Word of God and teach it to those that are listening. Thank you for allowing me this great privilege. Thank you for wanting to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So for us to accomplish the goal of learning God's Word together, we need to have our Bibles open. If at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me in the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm going to be reading verses 10, 11, and 12 here in a moment, and I've got a gospel tract I want to share with you, but let's start this way. Well, let's start with a hot topic for today, shall we? Here it is. Should preachers, should pastors preach on political issues? Should they preach on political issues? Should the latest political happenings be the dominant part of their preaching? My answer is no, But when God's Word says things that connect with political issues, well then, preachers, let's preach the Word. Well, what about social issues? Should pastors and preachers speak from the pulpit about social issues? Well, my answer is again, when and if God's Word lays out truth, then preach the truth. And if that truth says something about the social issue that's prominent at the moment, then so be it. Preach the Word. The passage today is a passage that does impact a social issue. The issue is work and providing for your own needs. I know of churches located in areas where the unemployment rate is very high. And as this church reaches out and with the gospel, people come to Christ, then those people are begun begun to be discipled. And the one thing that changes in those new converts' lives is their work ethic. And well, it should. You and I, when we come to Christ, Christ is going to transform our lives, all of our lives, and that includes our work ethic. The American society, you know this, the American society used to be based far more on the Judeo-Christian ethic, and work ethic was part of that. Work was prized. Shirking was a character flaw. By the way, the Judeo-Christian ethic had an impact on our nation in other areas on its issues like divorce, bankruptcy, abortion, education child discipline, and a host of other social issues. Well, today, though, the issue is working. So how about you get your Bible? I've got mine. Get a piece of paper. Get something to write with. And let's come to the Word of God. Let's get at it together. My title, Work. Get your Bible. Before I begin to read there, I want to encourage you to get some gospel tracts from us. Now, listen, friend, at the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to give to you three different ways to communicate with us and give us your name, give us your mailing address. Please do that. I want to send you absolutely free, 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 free of charge. I want to send you a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. In it will be this one entitled, A Tribute to Mother. A Tribute to Mother. Yes, to be sure, this track is used a lot around Mother's Day. But friend, it's not just a Mother's Day track. If you've heard this broadcast very often, you probably know what I'm about are ready to say here. As I'm traveling out speaking and so on, uh, whether it's me alone, my wife is with me, I have a number of meals in restaurants and often there'll be a table with a lady who's the age enough to be a mother or grandmother or a group of ladies. And as I get up to leave, I'll walk by their table, I'll put my nose in the air, I'll take a big sniff and I'll say, you ladies smell like mothers or grandmothers. You say, Brother Mark, you really don't do that. Yes, ma'am, I do. I I really do do that. 
And to date, I've never had anything but warm reception. They'll smile, and then I'll say to them, ladies, my mother's in heaven. I cannot honor her. But since I can't honor her, can I honor you uh, and honor her by giving you this gift? And I give them this track. I leave, look in the window, and those ladies or that lady is beginning to read the gospel track. Friend, I want to tell you something. This track will share the gospel every any time of the year. Let me send it to you, please. You'll be ready at the end of the broadcast. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, beginning of verse 10. Here's what the Bible says. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Stop right there. Let me begin very quickly by putting these three verses into their context. This section is part of a a section of the scripture here. This passage is chapter uh, dealing with disorderliness in the church caused by disobedient saints. Uh, The saints that were disobedient, uh, disobedient were causing disorder in the whole church. Verses six through nine deal with a disorderly life. Now, verses 10 through 12 deal with a derelict life. And Lord willing, tomorrow we're going to look at verses 13 to 15 and a disobedient life. But as I said, today we're dealing with this derelict life. They're derelict in the responsibility to do work, to earn their own keep. Now, friend, all of us know that there are always some folk who honestly cannot hold down a job. We're not dealing with those people. We're dealing with the typical folk who can work but won't or don't. There is a a little discussion among some Bible scholars as to why these folk here at the town of Thessalonica were not working. Well, frankly, why they were not working is not the issue. The point being made is the point. The point is this. They need to stop what they're doing as far as their practice of of not working, they're to get a job and go to work. Three words, one for each verse, all beginning with the letter T. Let me give you them. They're my outline. The T word for verse 10 is the word teaching. Teaching had taken place. Look at the beginning of verse 10. It says, when we, the apostle Paul, when we were with you there at the church, this we commanded you, if a man or person would not work, neither should he eat. Now that is the local church funds here, whether it's the benevolent fund, the deacon fund, whatever your church may call it, local church funds should not be used to feed this man who won't work. The issue is not a person who is out of work and actively seeking work. This guy in this passage won't work. Or perhaps he won't do the jobs that are available to be done because they're beneath him or whatever the case may be. Nonetheless, what our verse is saying had already been taught in the discipleship program of the Apostle Paul when he planted the church. New believers were taught to work. Now, in our society today, Receiving funds or refusing to work is a social issue. The Word of God speaks to it. Here is one of the passages. Verse 11, my T word, is the word transgression. Transgression. Not only was this person or persons not working, they went on and became busy bodies. They were meddlers. Actually, the Greek word behind our English translated busybodies is a sort of a play on words. In the Greek word translated here is actually the word for energy. But rather than the person using their energy to focus on a job, they were using their energy or spreading their energy around and around and around and meddling in the lives of others. This is a disorderly life. This person is derelict in their work, plus they're disorderly and out of step with their God. They have a double dose of bad Christian living. Teaching had been done, verse 10. Transgression was happening, verse 11. But now we come to verse 12. My T word is the word toil. Look at verse 12, and it says, and I quote, Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat of their their own hands. Now, friend, 
this is a verse with punch to it. It tells us an authority, it tells us an action, and it tells us an attitude. An authority, an action, and an attitude. Just as the Apostle Paul had begun this whole section back at verse 6 by pronouncing Jesus as the authority behind what was being said, so now the Apostle Paul reaffirms that this point, this command being given, is done in Jesus' authority. It would be what Jesus would be telling these saints if he were there. I'm actually struck by the fact that both words, command and exhort, are used here. I think it would have been enough. He would have said, we command you or we exhort you. But he does both. We command you, we exhort you, go to work. My friend, there's a huge obligation to obey here. The action that the sinning believer is to get involved with is work. They're to get a job. They are to not live off other people's income. They are to live off their own income. They are to provide their own food, and and the idea is food, clothing, that kind of stuff. They are to eat what they can provide for themselves. But listen, don't leave off the word quiet from our discussion. We're dealing with the attitude now. These busybody saints uh, were, were going around and they were meddling and talking. They are now to be quiet and do their work. Now, the idea is not that they are never to talk again. The point is that they are to mind their own business, leave other folks' business alone, don't talk about somebody else's business, mind your own, keep your nose to the grindstone, do your own work, provide for your own needs. Oh, friend, work is a societal issue. Our nation was founded upon the biblical concept that God invented work. He invented it for Adam before the fall, Genesis 1 and 2. God invented work, and that work is something we do as an act of worship. Yes, our work produces and provides for our needs. Yes, our work enables us to help others. That's all true. But, dear believer friend, your work, my work, is a form of displaying that Christ is my Savior. What I do, how I do it, is all to be done to the glory of Christ. Dear friend, let me just get very blunt here. Are you or I a lazy person? I think a lot of us have uh, have the ability to be lazy, don't we? I sure do, and you probably do as well. Oh, I know people who are naturally industrious. They can't sit still for a moment. I, I think there's some problems with that at times. But the greater problem is not the industrious people, but those of us who tend to uh, be lazy. Laziness is not a godly trait. God, help us to be those who do our own work, provide for our needs, not only to meet our needs, but give to others. But then, dear friend, we do our work to the honor and glory of Christ. Pastors are to be hard workers. Sunday school teachers, church leaders of all kinds are to be known as hard workers. Are you a lazy person? Then you're sinning. Ask God to help you change you, transform you, give you the work ethic of Christ. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of Christ, including your work. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.